This is the sond which was built at the National Research Council lab. And each of these little black sliders can go up or down. And it has 10 settings up and 10 settings down, so it can make 20 different sintons. And there are four of them on this row, and there are five rows altogether. That's a lot of sintons. So this instrument could create clouds of sintons. This is a later version of the serial sound structure generator. It has only one panel of 13 pitch controllers. The instrument was an early analog sequencer and it used telephone switching technology. And you could create a sequence of any number of notes up to 13 and repeat it. And you could also vary the output. This one is a glide, which would just raise the overall pitch up and down very gradually. An artist named Anne Lore Thompson Daniels designed these panels. There's uh, four different kinds. This one has uh, uh, an indication of where the different controllers are for the 13 different notes. Um, this is, um, I imagine, a waveform and uh, intersecting with another waveform. They're very um, interpretive of electronic music rather than being scientific or systematic in any way. The panels give each of the modules um, a different visual identity which could be reflected in sound and it overcomes the very technical lab-like appearance that the instrument would have without the panels. This is a serial sound structure generator uh, similar to the one we looked at earlier, but you see it has one, two, three different sets of 13 um, controllers, which means you could set pitch in one, you could set waveform in another, you could set volume or envelope in another. And there are panels here which are, they look very much like the panels that we saw on the sound. And of course, these modules could be connected among themselves also within this instrument. This is one of two panels that were side by side at the McGill studio in Montreal. This is the control panel for the Paramus, which was a very early digital synthesizer um, connected with analog controls, which makes it a hybrid synthesizer. And that was one of the breakthroughs in the 1970s was hybrid synthesis, which was a combination of analog and digital control systems and generation systems. This is a use of uh, bringing out the strongest uh, elements of analog control and applying it to digital elements such as the ability to draw a waveform on a screen and have it interpreted as sound. But you can see there's a very detailed uh, control panel here, extremely detailed, uh, much more than digital systems at that time could have imagined accomplishing.
He never felt his instruments were perfect enough yet. He, he wanted them to be better, better, better. And so he kept trying to improve them. Some people have speculated that if he'd had a manager that said, next November, we're going to take this to its final stage and move on to the next project, um, that may have had some effect.